So hello everyone and welcome to lesson 7 of B101 online course here with Mario. So today is uh, this video is our first part of grammar. Actually as this topic is a little bit more complicated than the others we've already seen then uh, we will have in lesson 7 two parts of grammar and then a third part of culture and conversation just to complete our theory. So, uh, in that sense, uh, let me introduce you to our topic. Um, so, personal pronouns. Sorry for this for his handwriting here. All right. So let me check here. And uh, as you probably noticed, we actually have already seen uh, this topic in one of our previous lessons. But the thing is, as you know, we have uh, at least two types of uh, pronouns and in Portuguese uh, so the ones we've already seen which are the subject pronouns so the uh, we have two cases of pronouns in the Portuguese Brazilian Portuguese language which are so first pronouns of caso reto all right, and then pronouns of caso obliquo. And then with pronouns from caso obliquo, then we have two more uh, topics which are the tonics, as you would call, so the pronouns oblico tonicus and then uh, atonus so actually in this first part I will just show you uh, I will just revise the first one with you and then take a look at both here alright so that's why I thought that would be better if we had uh, two parts for uh, this P101 uh, lesson 5, all right? Lesson 7, sorry. So let's start with our grammar work here. So this is just grammar for the two parts of lesson 7. So let's start with pronouns from caso reto, which are the pronouns that we've already seen. So let's just revise it. So here we have the pronouns eu, so which would be the pronoun I in English. So first person singular, then second person singular. I, you, he, or he or she, all right? Third person singular, then first person plural, we, then new plural, all right? Second plural, and then third plural, they, all right? But we have here the feminine and the masculine versions, masculine and the feminine versions, I'm sorry. And we, I should, uh, you should notice that in Portuguese, if we have, if we have uh, we are referring for a masculine and a feminine word then what we will use what we will maintain is the masculine form so if, if it's a man and a woman then we would say elis we would only say elas if we had just women all right so again eu tu ele or ela nós vós eles or elas all right so this way we just revise this first 
pronouns, personal pronouns, which are the ones we've already seen and they are used as subjects of uh, our uh, phrases or clauses. Alright, so let's move on to the important point here of this lesson. So here we have the obliquo pronouns. Alright, let me just correct this. So we have the obliquos, alright, but then in this case we have the atonos, alright. So we have os obliquos atonos, alright, and so these pronouns here are usually related to the, the question that we have, for example, uh, who or what. So when we need an answer to these questions, all right, so that's when we use those pronouns because they do not have a preposition, all right, and they are um, objects of the phrase, all right. So, for example, here, objects of the phrase, phrase, and then we have here, for example, uh, he gave me a new book. Then we have the same pronoun here as in English, all right? So, ele me deu, all right? He gave me, all right? So we will check that on our uh, with our examples later on, but just to make sure here. So here we have the pronouns that answer the question who or what, the questions that you would ask a verb, all right? And uh, here we have all those pronouns. Let me let us check those. So first person singular me. Second person singular T, C U A L I. For third person singular, then first person plural, second person plural, nos, vos, and then C us as les here to our third person uh, plural. All right, so. Me corresponds to me in English, so he gave me. Te correspond, corres, corresponds to the informal you in English, so I told you. Eu te contei. Eu te avisei. Then, here, o corresponds to him or it uh, when an object uh, is masculine, alright? So, uh, I uh, I gave him my number. All right, and then uh, here a corresponds to her or it, or it when an object is feminine. All right, and then nos corresponds to us, so he gave us. Then vos or vocês, which corresponds to plural you, so uh, he gave you new tickets to the show ele vos deu novos ingressos para o show and then os which corresponds to masculine then so i gave then a new uh, book eu os dei um novo livro and then as which corresponds to the feminine then in english be it people or objects, all right? And we all, those that I presented now that correspond to the English versions are the ones that are most used in our everyday use of the Brazilian Portuguese language, all right? But then we will be able to check it better later on, all right? So as we've seen the obliquos atonos, then we have the obliquos
All right, so our second group, as you'll be able to notice, the obliquus tonicus, they need uh, to have a preposition, all right? So, for example, para, which is two or four, a, com, all right? So let's start here. We have these pronouns when uh, we have uh, the preposition coming before then. So, for example, if we would like to say, uh, he gave me um, a new book. So, ele deu um livro para... gave a new book to me, for example. So, to, para, then we cannot use the pronoun me, all right? Because this is a, a atonal pronoun, all right? And then when we have this preposition, para, or to, all right? Then we use the tonico pronoun. So, para me. Ele deu um livro para me. He gave a book. To me, all right. So then let's check all of them. Here we have the pronouns for the first person singular, all right, second person singular, and third person singular, and then here, mean corresponds like uh, with the preposition, for example, to me. Para me, all right. So me, then, ti, ele or ela, si, nós, vós, eles e elas. So first person plural, second person plural, and third person plural. And then we have these combinations here, which are used when we have the preposition com, which means with. So instead of saying com with me would be instead of com me we do not use this then we use comigo instead all right so it would be comigo he, we went he he went to the party with me ele foi para a festa comigo all right and then contigo, consigo, conosco, convosco e consigo. All right. And then let's move on here because we have a few uh, examples here that are just the first examples because we're going to have a more complete uh, version uh, later on. So here we have. For example, our examples, ela me convidou para a festa. So we have the pronoun here. Then we have this atonal pronoun, all right, for the first person singular. And then we'll, it would be translated as she invited me to the party, all right, to the party. So we do not have a preposition here. So she invited me. All right. So we have what will be called a objeto direto, a direct object. And then here again we have another atonal pronoun for the third person singular uh, feminine or a feminine third person a pronoun. And then translation would be instead here we have. Eu a convidei para a festa, which would be I invited her to the party. All right, so I invited her. No preposition here, no to. All right, then we use the atron, the atron pronoun. All right, oblique atron pronoun. And then, of course, we have the personal pronouns here. All right, that are the subjects 
all right that we've also uh, that we've already seen in our previous lessons all right which are the hetero case so hetero case and then obliquo atono case but here we have again so our personal pronouns for hetero case but then you should notice here we have our pronouns here but those are the tonicus all right so obliquus tonicus here atonus here tonicus and the difference is because we have the preposition here to so ela comprou um presente para mim she bought a gift to me all right to me then we do not use the pronoun me we use the pronoun me and then again here I bought a gift to her we do not use this pronoun all right we'll use then here which for the third person uh, singular or plural here is actually the same as we have here to the head to case all right the subject case all right so that you are you must be aware aware of that all right so we have just two examples of each without the preposition and with the preposition me mean a ela all right just to clarify our uh difference between those pronouns and then here we have this last part which are some of most uh, difficult examples and these are just some introductory examples uh, as I know that it's a complicated topic we will use our part two to work more on these pronouns all right so here we have pronouns here again all right let me just my all of them so we can use it so here we have ela comprou um presente para si so she bought a present to her all right we would usually not repeat here ela because it would be like herself you know so as we have already mentioned it in the beginning since she's buying the present the gift to herself to her all right so we use this one here but if she was uh, we had she bought a present to him all right then we would have Ellie all right see because it's in terms of a reflexive uh, term that refers to herself all right so she bought a present to herself and then the next one here so we have our personal pronoun had to hear and then here our oblique pronoun all right so in the second example here eles vão viajar comigo all right so here what happens is that we have again our head to personal pronoun so let me translate it they will travel with me all right so again we have with which mean which is translated to com mais me all right and then we use comigo instead so here we have another example of uh, this tonical pronoun as we had before because we have the prepositions in here all right and then again here we have our head to personal pronoun and then let me translate it so she killed herself all right it will be like she killed her all right but herself as we have in here it's a reflexive case and then again now we have the atonal pronoun all right as we've already seen 
here in the beginning so this is why I have it in here all right she killed herself and then uh, here as you can notice we do not have the head to personal pronoun and in this case we have the omission of the head to pronoun the subject here because the verb ending already implies that we are using the first person singular so usually in the spoken Portuguese language we would not state the pronoun in our phrase so here we should notice then our uh, oblique pronoun all right our pronoun atono all right so the translation of it would be I invited her to dinner all right or then if we got here para o jantar all right dinner and then we have our atono pronoun since we have no preposition here then I invited her eu convidei -a para jantar all right convidei -a para jantar all right so that's our first part of lesson seven I hope it is uh, a little bit less complicated all right but then we will have our lesson seven part two to make sure that you understand all our personal pronouns from P101 online course. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Mario, P101 online course.